Well, hello guys and gals, and welcome back to another edition of Fishing Planet with me, Mr. Moose. And it's been a while since we've done a video on Fishing Planet, but a new map has been introduced today. It is called Michigan, and um, so we are going to check that out. It is the St. Croix Lake in Michigan. Uh, features panfish, catfish, trout, bass, and then of course you got pike and walleye there's also a uh, sturgeon and muskie in there so um yeah we're gonna check it out today there's also rock bass brook trout i mean there's a lot of new species in introduced into it so far i think i've caught uh catfish walleye northern pike um the sturgeon the brown trout the brook trout, the rock bass, smallmouth bass. I mean, there's a lot of fish in there for you. So we're going to check that out today. Is also is go over some of the new additions that are going to be added in uh, to Fishing Planet so that you can see what has been added in. Um, so we'll start with your inventory. One of the cool things they've done is subcategorized everything in your category now. So you see like spoons and spinners are all together. Baits are all together. Uh, you've got your bass jigs all together. This is now collapsible for you. So you can, uh, you know, a little bit easier going through all your gear. Uh, really like the fact that they added that into it for you. So the next thing is, is in the store. They've made some changes in the store. What I love about the store now is if I go into lures, you'll see up at the top, you'll see a little backpack that shows me that I already own this item and I have it in my backpack. Very, very nice addition there for you. Uh, baits as well. They've made some changes uh, also in the inventory system. If something is new, you'll notice it's got a yellow star next to it. It denotes it's something that new that has been added in. Shiners have been added in. I don't have any of those in my bag, so we'll grab a couple of them. Though uh, I haven't really found a use for them yet. Uh, let's see what else is new in the store. Uh, there are some new rods and reels that have been added in. Uh, in the spinning rods category, they added three new in. The Toras, um, they are um, basically a little bit heavier rods. Uh, a little bit longer as well. 710 for you guys. Um, so you can do a little bit of the heavier lines on there for those of you who are trying to use 30 pound test on a rod that was only meant for 11 pound uh, line. Um, as far as the match rods go, not a whole lot of addition here. They did add in two new ones, but they're nothing special. They're the same as the Nero's were. All they are is a cash version of what the Nero was. Um, so yeah, the Nero... Uh, 1410 that you get if you look it's only 5 to 12 if you go over here to the flex 1410 it's a 5 to 12 it's the same rod it's just a cash version of it uh, let's see what else do we get here uh, casting rods they made some changes this morning in the casting rods I'm pretty happy to hear that they made some changes um, they've added in an 8 6 um, when they gave this out in the beta, some of these Galaxy Quests were like four foot long rods. And we were sitting there going, look, you're not going to bank fish with a four foot long rod. And uh, the devs listened and they gave us uh, some better casting rods. So now you have a um, an 8.6 that uh, is actually rated for 35 pound test or 38 pounds. So you can actually um, use that now. So I'm going to grab that just for for fun i haven't actually messed with it i messed with the galaxy quest 511 uh, i had a lot of issues in beta with it hopefully they're going to fix those issues i don't even know that they fixed them i'm going to go ahead and pick it up uh so later on when i fix with it i can uh, mess around with it a little bit uh let's see what else has been new uh you guys are going to love this crankbaits have been added in now so you can get start getting those at level 17 and they go all the way up uh, to 19 You've got some different variations on them. You basically have a, a three foot, a six foot, an eight foot. So check your dives on these. Uh, the one thing that I didn't like in beta testing on these was um, on a crankbait, typically when you crank them, uh, the speed in which you crank has to do with how deep the, the crankbait will go. Also, 
the line weight will have a lot to do with that as well. Uh, basically, all of these go to six feet or, or whatever their foot depth is. Like this one's an eight foot diver, a deep diver. Your deep diver, all your dives are going to go to that uh, depth and hang there no matter what speed you crank at. And that was the only bummer that I saw on that. Um, but it's it's not too bad. They they work really good. Um, they're a lot of fun to fish with. You just lob them out there and uh, crank them straight in and, and you usually get a hit. Though sometimes you have to submarine them. Uh, where dive down, let them pop back up. Dive down, let them pop back up. And um, they'll work for you. Um, that's about it. Uh, you know, they've added some more uh, lures in. I will show you. They've added some more jig head sizes in. Um, so you'll get in here and you're going to, as you scroll through, the new stuff will have a little diamond over it. So you see you have a third ounce one aught hook here uh, on some jigs. You'll find that they've added in some new weights on some of these spinners as well. Though I think the hooks are a little big on them. Uh, but a jig head, there's a half ounce, two aught. There's a third, three quarter, three aught hook there. Um, what else was in there? There's some really big ones too. Um, but you'll see you've got a little bit larger, uh, medium spoon, which is good. We'll buy one of those, buy one of those. And again, you'll see that it goes into your inventory. You know where it went. Uh, if sometimes your bag's pretty full and you buy one, uh, it may go into your, um, it may not go into your inventory. It may go into your, um, into your home inventory. You don't know it. Now you know exactly where it went. Uh, there's your half and half ounce spinners, uh, at third of it at, uh, a, a three aught hook. They've actually got a bigger spinner with a six aught hook. And I don't understand why it's, it's a little bit too big. Um, I haven't found anything to catch on it yet. But uh, you've got some 5-inch and 6-inch worms now, which is nice to see them finally get some worms uh, that that are of length into the game. Uh, because who fishes with a 4-inch worm? I sure don't. 5-8s, uh, 1 and 1 16th ounce what jig heads now with a 6 aught hook for you. Uh, you're talking 6-inch worm here in purple, 6-inch in in green then you got your crankbaits here and then you get in a so your three quarter ounce spinner with the six aught hook that i was telling you about and uh see even some eight aught jig heads which is just crazy uh, and then you've got some a larger um uh, medium spoons with the larger hooks on them still i think six aughts a little bit big on these hooks right now so uh i really haven't been able to catch anything on the big hooks I'll get hits, but I don't catch anything. It's almost like the hook is just way too big. Um, so that's that. That's gear-wise. And then under the baits, uh, that's the one thing I didn't... Baits, they've added some new baits in. Uh, you now have mayflies, as well as um, they've added in uh, shiners into the game as well. So now you have shiners in the game. And uh, everything else is, is about what it is. So I'm not really going to change any of my gear right now. I did buy another rod, didn't I? And I put that in my, where did that go? Did that go into my home inventory when I bought that? Uh, lowest first. It went into my, that one went into my bag and that one went into my home inventory. All right. So, um, not to bore you guys too much with this. I'm just going to, uh, on this one here, throw, change out the rod. Come on, where'd it go? Or did it actually put it into my bag? It put it in my bag, which is not where I wanted it. Come on, go in there. Now I can go over here. And put the Galaxy 8.6 on. And we'll put the Galaxy 5 on there. And then I'll put the Farcaster 8.6 into a blank spot. So I have it at least. Alright, so that's that. Um, and then gear-wise, I'm not going to really change much out. There's not a whole lot that I need to change out. Uh, I'm going to put some line onto this thing. And then we'll go fishing. I'm going to put... Um, let me grab a 
a little bit of a braid here and one thing we talked about too was getting rid of this diameter stuff uh, and changing this over to the actual just test because um, who looks at who looks at braid and really figures out what their braid is they or, or our diameter I don't shop for diameter aligned for the most part I shop for the braid on it so uh, but anyways I'm gonna grab just a roll or two of 30 pound test I don't know why but just for giggles um, and then we'll throw that onto this reel here there are some new reels out spinning wise uh, that you guys will want to check out as well um, but I'll let you guys search that out for yourself and find that um, and I probably should have had this part rigged up before we even did this but that's okay all right so let's go do a little fishing at eh, 20 pound screw it um, all right so we're gonna head to Michigan there are four places in Michigan. Oh, I need to buy licenses as well. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and travel. Here's one nice thing they've added in to the game as well. Uh, when you travel to a particular lake and uh, you arrive there, it will tell you that you don't have a license for that particular lake. Um, though mine didn't prompt me. Now, that's weird. It prompted me in beta testing. And though I don't actually have a license yet. So into the store we go. Uh, I'll have to make a note of that. So we'll buy a license for each of these. Unless maybe they had free licenses for the first day. Who knows? All right. Three different places to fish from. You've got your fairy tale fishing. Uh, this is basically a swim platform out in the middle of the lake. Uh, and gives you a look at all the houses. And you're fishing around basically a few boats that are moored up. Uh, in the area here, I've been catching walleye, um, catfish, uh, sturgeon. What else have been catching there? Brown trout, some smallmouth. Um, yeah, and, and even some northern pike in that area. Uh, over here, King of Green Bay, you've got your northern pike over in this area. A lot of northern pike in this area, as well as your muskie. I've been catching those over there. Uh, and then here on the pier, you end up fishing on this rock line here on the side. Uh, this is where I've been catching um, a, small, a lot of smallmouth here, uh, yellow perch, uh, some nice size yellow perch in this area. Your rock bass are in this area. As, so um, it's a real brook trout is in this area as well. Um, so those are where we're going to fish uh, in the map as well. So... We're going to jump over here, and I'm going to do a little cat fishing um, because uh, they've done a really cool thing with the cats, and I'll show you that, and I'm going to get rid of this so uh, I don't have to look at that. All right, so uh, inventory. I'm going to change my bait. Let's see. I think everything's good. I'm going to change my lure depth here to about 88 feet, and... All right, let's catch a catfish. Uh, just out of curiosity, I want to see if anybody is catching anything. Prown trouts, walleye, smallmouth. All right, and we'll just, uh, you know, I'm not much of a float fisher guy, but I do enjoy the fight on these catfish. They have uh, they've added in some nice sized cats in here, uh, 20 pounds and up, and they're a good fight. They actually last a long time. Uh, somebody was complaining that they were fighting too long. I actually like it. You know, if it takes you 15, 20 minutes to land a fish, that's pretty good. If it's a big lurker fish, uh, and it's actually fighting you, so. Uh, yeah, I expect a catfish to take a while to, to land if it's a good size catfish. Um, my only thing is, the only issue I found in beta testing was that um, that maybe some of the, um, the big catfish were easier to land than the littler catfish. And uh, that was one thing that was a little bit of an issue. So I got something messing with it. I can see the little blue down there just kind of flashing a little bit so something is messing with it a little bit 
So we'll just kind of sit here and let them toy with it and see. And that's the thing with the float fishing in here. It does take a while. Uh, you're not going to throw it out there and immediately catch something right off the bat. Um, it takes a little just patience. So sit there, read a little something, something, and then all of a sudden you'll get a catch. And then you're basically going to sit and let it run. Um, it is not going to come in fast for you. It's basically going to walk on you some. Oops. The best thing I have found to do is just hold down your right mouse button and let the fish run. And uh, when it starts to, when your bars start to fade out, then reel it in. Otherwise, you're just reeling against it, and it's just not going to do anything. So just hold tension on the line. Uh, you know, in real life, if you had a fish run on you, you would um, you would just kind of pull back on the pole and let it do its thing. And that's what, that's all I'm doing here. I'm a little bummed out. You never see the spool turn when a when a fish is taking line on you. If you look down at the at the spool on this, it's not even turning one bit. Now, if I reel in, you know. But yeah, it doesn't turn one bit. When you're reeling line in, it shouldn't turn. But when a fish is taking line, that spool should be moving. Um, but when I reel, the bell is the only thing that should be going around and around, winding the line back onto the spool. But the spool should be turning right now with a fish taking line. So, okay, now he's turning and coming back to me. So we got a reel, reel, reel. This thing is still glitchy. It's, um... Some of the rods were really glitchy, and I don't know if they fixed any of that. They were dead set on getting this thing out, and the line is just not where it should be. The, my pole's not even hardly bending, which is wrong. It should have some flex to it. There, now it's starting to do something. I hate the sounds on this, too. That brrr. I mean, it should be tick, 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 and then it should be a whine if it's running. If it's running, it shouldn't be tick, tick, tick is just barely moving. But if a fish is taking, uh, you know, 10 foot of line off of your reel, it shouldn't be tick, 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 tick like that. It should be a constant bzzz. They should fix that as well. Little things like that just drive me nuts in this game that they can't get that right. I mean, the fishing's okay, but, um, I mean, this pole's not been in hardly at all, and this is probably a 20-pound fish. Still walking on me. I mean, I probably could force it in by, you know, working my line a little bit to the right and pulling it. Though it seemed like that just made it run even further. So it's just not doing anything but just going wherever it wants to go. So we'll just let it go. And we'll see how far it goes. Uh, okay. Well... I either have a monster or I have a glitch. One of the two. Alright. It wants to try and break my rod. Okay, this is so screwed up. There's nothing I can do here. I mean, I've got my line tension all the way down. I'm using 20 pound test. Is this the biggest fish in the lake or what? Nice. Well, the first fish out of the bat is a glitch. Let's see if I can manhandle this in somehow. Nothing. 
nothing I can do. Oh, it turned. It's coming to me now. How about that? Hold on to it long enough, and now it's just going to charge me. Now it's going to come in so fast that I can't land it. Well, you got to love this about this. Come on. There we go. Now I got a little tension on it. Seriously. Well. Can I come back in? Well, I don't know what that was. I don't know if that's a glitch or if this is just a monster catfish. We'll see if we can land it. Get any headway? It doesn't seem like it. So I'll go back to just holding the brake on it until the line starts to uh, fade a little bit. If that third, I mean, at that, I should be able to reel that fish in some. Eventually, that little fourth light should fade out a little bit as it starts to fade out I should be able to reel in and make some headway here we go there we go so just hold tension on it let it start to fade out reel in hold tension let it do its thing as it starts to fade out that should mean it's starting to turn towards me a little bit. There we go. Reel in a little bit. And then hold tension. There we go. I think I'm making headway now. Wow, there for a minute I thought this thing was just going to run all my line off and break the reel and break the rod but if somehow by getting rid of all the tension on it we managed to to keep it hopefully it's a decent fish and not just a regular catfish because i wouldn't have had that much trouble i didn't have i hadn't caught a fish that's done that uh even in testing so maybe i've got something of a decent size There we go. That's the reason I wanted to do catfish too, is because, I mean, you could catch all the other fish all day long, but catfish, at least it's, and I'm not a big catfisher, and I'm not a, and I'm by no means am I a cart fisher, um, because it's boring to me for the most part. I mean, Sitting around waiting all day for for a fish to hook up and it's just boring. It just even deep sea fishing it it gets boring. If you got a good fight on it, it's worth it. But um, and if it's something that you like to eat, that makes it better. That's the thing for me. I I'm not a sport fisher. I don't like to catch fish that I'm not gonna eat. So carp fishing does nothing for me. Um, and I like catfish certain ways, but it's not my favorite fish. So I don't fish for it that often, especially when I have other things I can go after. And in this game catfish is really usually the last thing I go after but they added in these big blues and 
can't resist the urge to go after them uh, just because there's more to them than any other fish in the game and I've had these uh, these little battles go on for quite a bit of time it, I've, I've caught a catfish I've had it get within uh, 20 feet of the pier uh, or the platform here and then just run again so just because you get it within 50 feet of you doesn't mean the battles almost over uh, and that's cool that's that's what I've asked them to do in the game from the word go is don't make it to where the fish runs way out and then once you get it to turn and come back in the fights over uh, I want the fish to do that you know I want to see it get up and see you uh, or see the boat or break the surface and then realize oh this isn't where I want to be and then try to get away from you uh, you would you know unless you just wear a fish out in real life uh, they're gonna do that if you pull them in too fast when they break the surface they're gonna freak and they're gonna go try to get away from you now if you just wear them out to pure exhaustion then they're gonna they're gonna be all right You know, and just like you, fish don't have an infinite amount of energy. Eventually, they're going to tire out. It looks like we can get this one to come on in now. So, let's see what we got. There we go. Trophy blue cat. <laughs> nice. 38 pounds. That's some XP right there. I wonder if I was incognito if people actually saw that. Uh, nope, nobody saw it. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> That's a nice fish, kids. That's a nice fish. Alright, so uh, I'm going to change it up a little bit here since we caught that big catfish and thought I would put on a crankbait, show you guys the crankbaits and do a little fishing hit a couple of other areas on the map as well and just see what's what uh, so I'm just gonna grab this little uh, I think this is an eight footer uh, let's see uh, crank big six foot with the number five hook and we're just gonna toss around here and work it around let you guys see how the crankbaits work uh, in the game and pretty much you just pick a speed and reel it in uh, that's it you go anywhere from fast to slow uh, and it's still you see it's right in the middle of the water column as I reel it in now I'm reeling in on three speed uh, and you'll see that it's uh, just doing its thing working across the water you have changed to 5 a.m. the catfish is a you know a later in the afternoon type of deal usually start about six o'clock on the catfish and uh, and fish until the end of the evening with them. They're hit or miss. All right. Just fish all around this boat. Pull in. See what you can find. Ideally, you'd want to be closer to it. I don't understand this fascination with throwing 200 foot to 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 hook a fish. You know uh, why everybody thinks got to be so far. But I guess that's part of game design and and bank fishing. Though, you know, this is where I think they miss it in bank fishing. You'd be standing on that pier in between the two boats, or you'd be standing on the bank up there by the bulkhead casting out in the water not out here in the middle fishing out towards the bank unless you were in a boat then if you were in a boat you would be I'd be within 10 15 feet of that schooner over there and you know I'd be uh, tossing up underneath it tossing around that pylons and fishing that instead we'll show you where we're actually fishing which is 
sort of silly to me. You're on a, basically on a swim platform out here, you know. And uh, if you note the weather, it's early spring. It's 39 degrees. So um, how'd I get here? Did I swim out here? If I did, I'm going to have hypothermia by the uh, time I get my third cast in the water. So... Alright, so I'm going to slow the speed down a little bit on this. This is two speed, and you see the lure stays exactly at the same height than the water column as it did before. I go all the way down to one speed. It's still exactly the same depth in the water column. So again, if they could work on one thing with the crankbaits, I'd love to see where if you're at three, you dive down to the full six foot if you're at two you're a little bit above that maybe five if you're one you're up around the three foot range or you know just under the surface because a lot of it has to do with the speed in which you're pulling uh with how deep a crankbait will actually go uh, and it has to do with the pitch of the blade and the speed in which you're pulling and then also a little bit has to do with the weight of the line you're using Now, for presentation, I've found uh, two works really good. I just had a hit, and it did not take. Yeah, it did. So look how the rod is freaking out. And they need to work on this rod a little bit. It's got some issues. That looks like a walleye. Nice. All right, so change it up a little bit on the map. Uh, we're going to switch over here. This is King of Green Bay. Uh, this is more of a reeded area, and it's going to give you a little more cover. This is more of a natural area for your um, for your um, pike, muskie, things of that nature. And you can come over in here and fish a little bit. I, I've had success with all kinds of lures over here. Anything that you've been catching with, like your casting spoon, uh, I've had success with it over in this area. Just casting it straight out, out into the, uh, and working the reeds. Um, had success working it. Um, actually, this rod's too big for this area. I can't hardly even cast it. I need to be fishing. And here's the thing, I'm fishing a different account than I fished in um, in beta, so I haven't actually taken the time to get everything set up right. It's I'm basically using, this is my normal account, uh, but everything that I did in beta is on my other account. I think this rod, let's, this has 8 pound test on it, that's okay. Really 6 pound braided still is really good for just about anything in here. And I will set up a, um, I can do a casting spoon on there. And what do I got here? Nothing on that one. Um, just for giggles, I'm going to take the mono and drop down to uh, I probably can put some braided on here as well and put on a crankbait. I have not used this one. I didn't see this one. Um, did not see this crankbait in beta. So we'll give it a try as well. All right, so uh, let's cast out here and see what happens. Lots of good places to fish in here. There's lots of cover. You can see all the reeds. A little low light right now. Um, this is a cloudy day. Uh, you don't get that many good sunny days. Wow, I'm fishing way too fast. You get a lot of cloudy days on this map. Uh, not too many sunny. The sunny days are really good fishing. Uh, it has a really aggressive fish pattern on the sunny days, though. It's... Uh, you got about four hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon. If we open up the, the fish graph here, so the fishing really doesn't pick up until about seven o'clock in the morning. On the sunny days, very aggressive. 
early in the morning and it falls off real quick after about 7.30, 8 o'clock uh, to almost a dead lull during the middays and then picks back up around uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So uh, that's your that's your fishing patterns for this map. So 5 o'clock in the morning, still a little bit early uh, to work. And just crank in, see if I can get something to bite. You got northern pike over here, musky. Um, that's pretty. I, I think I caught a walleye out of here as well. Um, but mainly northern pike and musky in this area. The musky is a rare fish in the game. Um, you're not going to catch a ton of them. So if you're in the game. And you've been looking forward to Michigan, thinking, man, I can't wait to catch in, and, and I'm going after all musky. Um, there's not really an area that is set up specifically for musky, and you're going to catch a ton of them. You're going to be in here just kind of start over here and work. You're going to be in here and just catch them by accident. You know, you may catch, if you fish the entire day, you might catch three or four in a day. That's sort of the way it's set up. Drag that down a little bit. Come on. Let's see if I can get out of here without breaking something. Oh, come on. Yeah, I'm just snagged up good, aren't I? So we'll see if we can catch something here other than lily pads and reeds. Come on. Yeah. See if I can get my line in without any more snags. I did cast a little deep in there. Yeah, come on. There we go. Usually I don't try to go back into that back corner. I've been casting maybe straight across here. I mean, I bit off a little more than I could chew going in that deep into it. Um, I should have a pretty clear path coming back through here. That was a little bit of a wishful thought, throwing a boat anchor in there and dragging it through reeds and lily pads. As you can see, the map is just beautiful. They've done a great job with it. I I think the water is a little too much lavender, or a little too violet for me. Um, but it's still, the for the most part, the map is really great looking. Very scenic. Um, I think a lot of people will be very impressed with it. They've done a really nice job. I just think they, uh, hopefully there's more fishing spots to come. Uh, missed it. So hopefully there's more fishing spots to come, uh, because I do think there is a, uh, it's a huge lake, and I just think they've only, maybe they've only opened up like two or three spots, or three spots to begin with. Maybe there's more. 
Okay, they got to fix all that stuff. There we go. But, yeah, as you can see, looking at the map, it just seems like there's a lot more that they can do. I mean, with just these three spots. I mean, you can put a fishing spot here, one here. And you can have all kinds of fishing spots up through here. To me, these boats ought to be fishing spots that are moored out in the water. Okay, so you're sitting on a boat that's stationary. It may not be their idea of boats that they actually are planning on putting in the game. But each one of these boats ought to be a fishing spot. There ought to be a fishing spot here and here and here and here. Back here, there should be a fishing area. Um, all around this shoreline should be fishable. This should be fishable. I mean, really, ultimately, what would be great is in the game is they added in where you can walk all the way around the entire lake. And you can just fish wherever you want to. Would love to see that eventually get added into the, into the game because that's the way you would... In real life, you would just work your way up and down. Um, you know, fish over here, fish here, 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 here. I'm not so sure that they just, this isn't just the initial part of it, but I don't know enough to tell you that that's what it is. Hopefully that is it. Hopefully these are just initial placements to get the map in and give you a place to fish and then go from there. So that's my, that's my hope anyways. I'm going to fast forward an hour, see if we can get a little more sunlight in here. Uh, it's still cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. And uh, fish a little bit. It'd be nice to catch a fish over here instead of talking about what I have caught. Actually catch something. I mean, the pike are pretty aggressive, and I haven't really had any problems catching pike. Though I will say, this is the first time I've fished a cloudy day on this particular map. Um, the time that I had in the on the map was all was all sunny. Though people were saying the sunny days were few and far between. Though I look at my map, though, just a minute ago, and it looked like we had three sunny days in a row. So. Let's try the crankbait and see how that works. We're just fishing points right now. So it just makes sense. From what I can see is points. The shadowing on the, I mean the reflections on this confuse me out a little bit. I look at them and I think I'm seeing grass and moss and a lot of times it's just a reflection. No. Let's see how far we can cast in there. We don't actually get to the grass. So I have to admit I'm a little bit of a fish out of water though uh, when it comes to fishing Michigan Lake. Uh, growing up in the south, uh, our fishing style a little bit different than, uh, you know, we never was a pike fisher, never never caught muskie. So that's been a new uh, experience for me. I actually had to sit down with uh, buddy Chuck and talk to him a little bit about muskie the other day to get some insight from him as to how to catch them, what lure selections and things of that nature.
because uh, that is not something I normally fish for. Well, this is a bust coming over in this area. There we go. There's something. Something of size, too. To make me have to drop my drag way down. With this big of a reel, this big of a pole, and uh, only six pound test, to have to drop my drag all the way down is uh, ridiculous. Whatever it is, it is wanting to run on me. There we go. Don't be afraid of the red. Um, if you don't have red on the outside of the ten line tension, don't be afraid of it. Hold it up there. Let it get into the red. As long as it doesn't glow red on the outside of it or go yellow on the outside of it and then red, you're all right. Don't be afraid of red. Just let it hold there. That's good line tension. Let it do its thing until it turns on you. Now, if your reel starts flashing that you might break the reel or you might break the line, then be concerned a little bit. But if you're just in the red, don't be afraid of it. Just hold it. And let the fish turn and come back to you and then you can reel some more. So I'll just hold that in the red, let it do its thing, and then uh, now I can reel. I think a lot of people don't understand that in this game. They, As soon as they see the red, they freak out and think that they're, they're going to break it. It's when you start seeing your reel and your rod show up or when the red gets on the outside of it that you have concerns. I think a lot of people are afraid to hold the fish too. And a lot of that comes from there was some things where fish got away from excessive line tension and stuff like that. Hopefully they have fixed all that. I haven't seen the issue in the game. And with just a regular northern pike. How does a four pound fish, this is again, problems I have with the game. Four pound northern pike. I was in the red, I got one drag setting on this. And this is, I, I've said this from the word go, I'm, I don't think this line tension has anything to do with line tension as much as it is, is the amount of tension you're putting on the fish which is completely wrong. Again, the, line, the setup that I'm using right now, if we go into inventory, the setup that I was using to catch that fish is a 12 to 48 pound rod with a, a reel that can put a maximum of 23.5 drag on the fish. And I'm using six pound braided line. Well, actually I'm using eight pound braided line. So I'm using an 8-pound braid, and I just had to struggle to catch a 4-pound fish. I should have been able to crank the drag down on that and just manhandle that fish in. I should have been able to have 100% drag applied to reel that fish in and shouldn't have had a single issue. But yet, I had to drop my drag all the way down to 1. Otherwise, I was in risk of breaking the line and breaking the, the, the you know, fish off so still got some issues there they really need to work that because that is so frustrating with that rig i should have been able to just a manhandle that fish in and instead it was uh it was a challenge so all right so let's change uh the map over we're going to change over here and this is uh your other fishing spot for you um here on the pier and uh, let's see if anybody's over here catching a little bit of yellow perch, some smallmouth bass. So, uh, inventory, what am I going to fish with? I'm going to use uh, this rod and I'm trying to remember what all I caught over here with. 
hot with a bunch of different things. So I think I'm going to throw... Uh, that's too big. You're basically catching panfish over here. So if you basically think of it that way, uh, as panfish, probably everything I got is a little bit big. Let me look in the store, see what's available. Let's just look at lures. And I want to look at... Uh, just the big ones. I don't want the big ones. Oh well. Uh, backpack. Let's grab. Mm, for this rod, let's throw on. Oh, there's a the quarter ounce one. I wasn't sure if I had one in my bag. All right, so. Where's my rod? Where am I? Hello. I got that, that, and we'll throw something out here just in case it wants to work. Um, it's really too big of a rod to fish in this area, so I'm really not going to do anything with it. Just so I can figure out why I don't have a... Oh, I'm not standing close enough to the water. Duh. Let's see where I'm at. All right. Um, so I've had success basically fishing all through this area for, um, if you want to catch some of the, the brook, the brook trout and the rock bass in this little area here, only float fishing for those. And then casting out in this area here, I've been having some pretty good luck with catching walleye, um, smallmouth bass. Uh, a little bit of everything. Get the hut up so I can at least see what I'm doing. Pretty deep water, so it does take a while for a light jig to get down to the bottom. Um, so I throw it out there, let it sink, and then just start working it in slowly. I don't know if they fixed it or not, but it seems like maybe they fix it to where when you come out of inventory and you change a jig, you don't end up with so much drag. That's nice if they actually added that. That might be something that I didn't see and recognize until just now. Before, I was always having to pop my drag down because they would I would have too much drag. But it seems like they've fixed that. And now I've gotten snagged again. Come on. Oh, don't you break anything. There we go. Nice. Yeah, before, if you went into inventory or anything, when you came back out, uh, it would reset everything. And it looks like they have fixed that, so it doesn't do it. So if I change rods, nice, it's leaving your drag where it used to be. That's great. I'm glad they fixed that. I don't know if that's something that just came out in this patch, or if that's something that I just haven't recognized has been changed in the game. Because I'll be honest with you. Hadn't spent that much time playing the game lately. Uh, I worked really hard during the beta for the um, for the last big patch where they changed the economy and where they changed the levels for Florida and California and they made all the adjustments with it. Um, and I did that really hard, basically re-leveling a whole nother uh, a whole nother account. Um, and then. Um, after it was released, I kind of got in and fished a little bit, but the game hasn't had the same excitement for me. It's, um, after playing the very first version of it, then playing through 
uh, the public release for open beta um, and with all of the changes they made they've slowly taken the fun out of the game for me um, and then again I like the game just to casually fish a little bit but it doesn't have the same excitement for it it, it gets old pretty quick for me um, just because you tend to catch the same thing over and over and over again. It's not like before where every cast you knew you had a chance to catch a big fish. Um, that it was, you may catch some small fish and then, you know, catch big fish. But within an hour or two, you, you had a good chance to catch something of a considerable size and um, and have a decent, you know, and have fun. I mean, and that's at the end of the game. It's what a video game should be. Even if you do slap the name Simulator on it, it should be pretty fun. And, um... Come on. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it should be fun. It should excite you and make you want to, you know, not put the controller down. And I haven't felt that in a long time. Uh, when I get in and I play for 30 minutes, and in California, all I catch in that 30 minute time is 11 pound striper over and over again, and, and 3 pound largemouth or 3 pound smallmouth. I don't get the same excitement as when I was catching trophy salmon and trophy and unique, uh, um, you know, striper. Rather, I'm catching them consistently or catching them sporadically. At least I was catching them on some sort of basis. And uh, you don't get that every time I log in and play. You know, thirty minute, in 30 minutes, if you're not catching at least a trophy, the game's not exciting. Um, and there'll be people who will rip me on that and will say... Oh, you can't catch a big fish or whatever. You know, cry baby or whatever. At the end of the day, it's supposed to be exciting and fun. And you can sit and you can say, well, it's a it's a simulator. And you you don't catch a trophy every time you go out fishing. And you, you don't catch a unique but once in a lifetime or something like, else like that. Come on, guys. it's It's not as true to life as it should be. Alright, I mean, if it was true to life, you may come out here and you never catch a, a, a fish. Um, and who's going to play that game consistently if it's that true to life? I mean, again, you're playing a video game that is a simulator at the same time. And, again, the casual fisherman or the casual player who only has... A little bit of time every day to game. If they're not catching the trophies and the uniques periodically to keep them interested in the game, they're not going to stay interested in the game. They're just not. And you say, oh, well, you can go catch unique sunfish or you can go catch... That's that's fine for, for some people, but that's not what people... You know, that's not what you want to do. If, if your thing is you want to bass fish and you want to bass fish and you want to spend a couple of hours bass fishing and hopefully during that time you should be able to catch a trophy or a unique um, in, a, in a fishing period. Uh, I'm not saying you need to catch one after another, but in a couple of hours of, of playing the game, you ought to be able to catch a trophy or a unique to keep you excited and having fun in the game. And if you're not, you're not going to find the joy and the excitement in the game. And it's going to feel more and more like a grind when you're catching nothing but 11-pound fish. And that's sort of that's sort of where I was at with it. And um, now I just don't even care. I'm not even into the leveling. I don't even care about level. I don't care about money or anything else like that. I'm playing the game differently now. Um... I'm just going to fish a little bit here, fish a little bit there, test the game out whenever I'm needed to test the game out and give my two cents on what I think needs to be changed. And if people listen to me, they listen to me. If they don't, they don't. And um, 
you know, and if people don't respect my opinions on things, that's fine. If you disagree with me, I understand. But uh, that's just kind of where I'm at with it. But I think if you if you go so wholehearted as to say, well, it's the ultimate fishing simulator. Yes, it is. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the core of it is to be a video game. It wouldn't have been sold on Steam as a video game, um, or given out on on Steam as a video game or whatever, if it wasn't meant to be a game. You gotta have some excitement. Ah, there's the walleye. Alright, so you've seen each part of the map. I've caught a couple of fish for you. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, first look at Michigan. Um, we'll do some more fishing on it. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little look at each part of the map, talk a little bit about it, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, make sure you thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and uh, of course, leave your comments and uh, below. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.